and welcome friends to the first episode of Virtual Pitch Practice. And I want to welcome my friends and my colleagues, and I'm so glad that you can join us for what promises to be a really great session. We have a highlight, a spotlight guest, and I have two great panelists. It should be a lively, entertaining uh, session. The reason I started Virtual Pitch Practice is because every week, every month, people come to me and say, Steve, you know, I have a presentation that I need to do and I could use a little help. Now, ordinarily, we'd go to a real pitch practice, but we can't. So this is a way to do pitch practice, to get some feedback, some instant feedback, to eventually show your stuff to a wider audience than the 10 people who might be in a conference room with you. And it'll be just like a raise session or a Venture Atlanta where you get mentored before you get on the stage. So we have a great panel here today with some experts and we have a terrific guest. And we'll get to all of that in a minute. I will tell you right now that the guest that I have, I met about seven years ago, eight years ago, and he had plans that sounded like he was going to go over the moon. And I want to tell you, in those eight years, he's already gotten to the moon today. And now he's trying to bring everybody along with him. But before we get to Diamond, let's talk to our panel. Ankur, you're first. Introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you, Steve. And uh... My name is Ankur Chatterjee. I'm the managing partner and chief operating officer of Alder Capital Partners. Uh, we're a boutique private equity and private debt firm uh, up in the northwest corner of Metro Atlanta. Um, we do a variety of different kinds of investments. Uh, we love talking to venture companies. We love working on creative, new, interesting, unique ideas. Uh, and we're very excited to be here to uh, to, to to watch you know this pitch and uh, you know meet people like Diamond and learn more about uh, companies in the uh, in the Atlanta area. All right, great. Thank you very much. And Christy, calling from the car. Christy, calling. introduce yourself. Calling. Hey, Diamond. So good to see you. I am Christy Brown. I'm the president and CEO of Launchpad 2X, headquartered here in Atlanta, which is focused on scaling female founders to CEOs. Um, in addition, I am a multi-time founder uh, with three exits that I can check the box on. Uh, that being said, I had the opportunity also to step into venture capital several years ago. So I still am very ingrained in venture capital funds as well as angel investing um, in and around the, the U.S. base. Uh, my focus there is really underserved founders as well as females. And um, what else can I tell you? I am typically a corporate refugee that dives in and out with the exits that I make, and I have a lot of fun doing that. I like to say I repair the, I repair the enterprise that they build. Um, and I am super grateful to be here. I am enchanted and in love with entrepreneurship and can't wait to see you pitch. Fair enough. So that's our expert panel for today. And it's an elevator pitch. We, uh, we're all at the convention together. Uh, we've come to the same convention. And um, we three, Steve and Ankur and, and Christy, get on the elevator on the 20th floor heading down for breakfast. And who should walk on to our elevator except Diamond McNulty? So we know each other and we want to make small talk and we turn around and we say, hey, Diamond, you're here for the convention. What do you do? I say, hello, everyone. I'm Diamond McNulty. I'm an executive chef, author and entrepreneur here in the Atlanta area. Um, I created Chef Diamond and Friends, which is a young chef brand to empower kids to eat healthy and become successful in life. So that brand includes books, young chef gear, products and live workshops. So, I mean, guys, name one parent in the world that doesn't want their child to eat healthy and become successful in life. Look at me. Success is my video game. I believe that Chef Diamond and Friends will be to Disney what Netflix is to Blockbusters. 
right. I I see Anker shaking his head. What do you what do you think of that elevator pitch? It's, uh, it's bold. It's bold. You're 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 you just took on the you know twelve thousand pound you know blue whale. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so how, do you, how do you how do you do that? You know, you you just believe in yourself. Um, you know, from the beginning of time, you're saying, "How do I how do I take them on, or how do I pitch like that?" <laughs> Well, I mean, I, it was it was it was great. It, I mean, it definitely got attention, right? It it, it begs the follow up question. Yeah. So that's that's excellent. That's an excellent thing. You know, you, you're drawing out the uh, drawing out the audience. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to hear like, how do you? So I, I you know I I looked at your your site, and um, and I see you, you have very very cool illustrations and and uh, stuff like that. But I, I, what? I, how do you take on like a you know, you're actually calling out Disney, right? That's like, right. That's like party, right? <laughs> I'll tell you what, before right. we get into that, yeah, Edward, I want to just, I want to shift to Christy for a second. Christy, what did you think of uh, Diamond's elevator pitch? Yeah, I thought you did a great job. I think your enthusiasm and energy around it are, are, are very contagious. The other thing as, you know, I think about, you know, uh, the pandemic and as it rages on and the kids in home, like it's an instant fix for how, um, how we can utilize our time and help educate kids and probably stave their energy a bit right inside the home. So um, that's a pretty exciting facet or element you probably didn't think of when you started your company as well. That's, that's probably like a rocket ship for you right now. So I thought it was great. I fully understood exactly what your business model was. Is. Okay. Thank you. That's great. Let me ask you both a question <clears throat> before I chip in. Is there anything that you might suggest? Remember, we're on the express elevator going down. Nobody else got into the elevator. So he's only got 20 floors from where we're all staying to the bottom. Are there any things that we might suggest to make the pitch a little bit better? Um, I'll, I'll happily jump in. I think it would be really nice to know because instantly you only have in an elevator, you know, 30 seconds to 60 seconds typically to pitch, even if you're on the 70th floor on an express <laughs> elevator. Um, it'd be really cool to hear, hey, this is how, you know, what I'm doing. I'm educating, teaching, cultivating, you know, curating things with kids. And I do that for $4.99 a month. You know, if you kind of plant a price tag on something, um, you know, I might ask you some more when we get off the elevator about how do I, how do I find your website? How do I find you? How do I engage you? That would just be one other element. I know putting the price out front sometimes can leave money on the table, but if you've got kind of a subscriber, um, system, I'd be interested to know that pretty quickly as a parent. You'd want to know that right away. Okay. Interesting. Love, love Anker, your thoughts? Um, so yeah, I see, and Chrissy, I, 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 I see where you're going with that. And I, I, I agree. And it, it makes sense, uh, you know, depending on the, the, the business type and model. Um, I, you know, what would, if, if I'm having trouble figuring out what I would change or, or, or improve on, because it, it really, you, you picked a, a good one, Steve, you, you got, you got a guy who, who really came out of the gate, you know, guns blazing. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it was a really well-structured pitch and, uh, but I, again, I'll say, you know, the way you hooked it at the end, you, you left with a kind of a, you know, a, a crater, like you, 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 you like, you like blew up a bomb at the end where you were just like, I'm taking on Disney. And I'm like, everybody's going to want to know how, mm -hmm. right? Everybody's like, how are you going to do that? Like, they may be incredulous. They may be, you know, so maybe to make sure that they take you truly seriously, because there's a lot of people out there who are saying, I'm going to take on, you know, and, and some of them may have no idea how to do it. You mm -hmm. might want to give them one nugget of information past that, uh, but highly curated, highly specialized so that it continues to, you know, reel in that, that, that investor or that potential client or, or whatever it is. Okay. I like where you're going with that, Anker. And let me say now, I think it was a fabulous elevator pitch. I think all the elements were there. But if I listen to what you said, Diamond, and what Christy and Anker said, 
What if I suggested, and remember, everything is a suggestion here, and you can push back and say, nah, Steve, I don't think so. But what if you just reordered it a tiny bit? Mm -hmm. Start with, is there one parent in the world that doesn't want their kid to eat healthy? Well, my business is, and then you went through it, and tell them everything that you do. Finish that middle segment with what Christy said, which is, and it's only four ninety nine a month to the parent or the you know the mom or the dad, and then wrap up with, and we're going to take on Netflix and Disney with a entire media conglomerate of materials to get there. And now we've accomplished almost everything, in, including why don't you join me for breakfast and tell me how you're going to nail Disney and take away their kids franchise? Or how are you going to get into the Disney franchise and beat them at their own game? So I, I think it's a wonderful pitch. I think all the elements are there. I think you know, you've only got 20 floors, yeah. so you want to keep it short and, and hook them at the beginning, tell them what the process is and the price, tell them who you're going after because the investor is going to say, well, maybe you could even sell to Disney or Netflix. I, I want to know how this is going to work. And suddenly you're having breakfast with the investors. So I think it's it's just terrific. And and I know that Diamond has done all this stuff already, <laughs> but it's just amazing to hear. That's great. So yeah. let's do this now. Part two of this episode is the investor pitch. Now, let's presume that, in fact, Diamond is speaking. He's either got a breakout session or he's gone to the, the room at 10 or 11 in the morning where the investors are going to be and he's on the agenda. And what he's done is he's prepared uh, an investor pitch for us. Diamond, um, I think you should be able to share your screen. Here we go. And anytime you're ready, let's take a look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, the next presenter on our schedule today is Diamond McNulty. Uh, Diamond has a unique proposition for you. Take it away, Chef Diamond. A dream come true. Imagine a young man born in Chicago inside the most notorious projects in the world, the Cabrini Green Projects, surrounded by gangs, drugs, and violence. Imagine, after walking past the project buildings, doctors starting to play basketball with inner city kids, those same doctors starting up a youth program to provide tutoring, mentoring, free clinics, and other opportunities for youth. Imagine, the young man inside that program sheltered from the negativity because he's out of the streets and inside a law school being tutored by doctors and lawyers. The same young man becoming a mentor to the kids in the program himself, volunteering to teach kids how to cook. Imagine the same young man graduating high school while winning a $24,000 cooking competition. The same program was there to provide scholarships, books, and gave $5,000 private donation from angel investors. Imagine the executive director of that same program, taking that young man to his first high-end restaurant to expose him to the opportunities inside the culinary field that he was entering. And that same director helping that young man get his first chef mentoring job inside a prominent restaurant in Chicago, Marche on Randolph. Imagine that young man graduating college starting to work at the Peninsula Hotel, Five Star Five Diamond, exceeding expectations because early exposure, access, and opportunities. Imagine 
that young man traveling the world and creating a young chef brand to empower the same kids to eat healthy and succeed in life. Then traveling back to Chicago every year to raise money for the kids in that same program by volunteering his services with over $30,000 raised on his behalf. Imagine a young man who became a mentor to the same kids in that program, turn around and become a fundraiser, donate, donor, junior board member, board member, and now executive board member of the same program, soon to be executive director. I am that young man, Diamond McNulty. Chicago Youth Program saved my life. Donate today. Chicago Youth Programs was built on the backs of volunteers, which isn't scalable. And today our goal is to raise $20 million to hire trained staff and scale the organization to support kids across Chicago. There is another Diamond McNulty out there and we need your help. Thank you. Oh, that was that was great. That great was, job, Diamond. Thank you. Uh, we need to we need to see you again. Okay. There we go. Now, I made a mistake. I should have told you to put your toque and your apron back. Have you, got, <laughs> have, you have you got a second? Yeah. Apron back on while we while we talk about you, Christy. You go first this time. What what do you think? What did you hear? What's great? I was ready to write a check. I was very <laughs> tired. <laughs> I was very excited for everything first that you've accomplished. And, you. and I often think founders really connect, whether it's investors or clients or whomever your or community that you're pitching to. When we hear your story and what really gave you um, the root for your idea, it, it is such a connection. And so um, I thought you did a fantastic job. The you know, the cadence, the articulation of your speech, everything was was pretty spot on, um, which I appreciate, especially being online so often uh, that it was so well well formed. Um, I, you know, you didn't state a, a financial need; you just asked for a donation. So, you know, that would be my my question as well, just to to make sure I understand. And again, I'm just putting on a venture capital hat, but this could be to community or clients or otherwise, just to understand what you're looking for and looking to achieve. Okay, thoughts? Yeah, so Diamond, that, that was really good. Um, I, uh, I've i actually served as an executive director uh, of a charity for, for several years. So I have a kind of a unique perspective on on what you're, what you're doing here, what you're you know, kind of, uh, you know, I think your experience, the the real value to that entire pitch was you telling the narrative of that foundation, right? That 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 CYP organization, there is a narrative that you took from start to finish, and that was absolutely <clears throat> beautiful. It was it was a it, there there it's like a there's nothing better than that. And I think Christy mentioned this as well, and and I absolutely wholeheartedly agree. Um, your uh, your, I guess the, my what works for us the best is when we specifically call a donor to act in a certain way, right? If if your if your pitch is for a financial you know capital program or like a financial uh, raise. Um, you know, if you, if you state, I guess the, you know, and I think you, you, you might've done this actually, I think you said 20 million, right? 20 million. So I may, I may be giving you advice that you already did, uh, but, but that's, that, that's <laughs> fine. I'm just going to, I'm going to reiterate that it's very important and it may be actually, let's, let's go with this. It may be best to kind of almost reiterate that occasionally, right? You know, like maybe have that in there and then, and like, just leave it with, leave with that so that the last thing they hear is like, here's what I want. Here's the call to action and here's our objective. And, you know, and, and here's how you donate. Um, Cause I honestly, like, if I wasn't doing this pitch practice with you right now, I would be on that website making a donation. Um, so I think your pitch was very effective. Uh, I think, you know, there's very few things that I think you could probably do to tweak it a little bit. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, if I'm being completely brutal to you, I'm a very uh, kind of, I'm a very type A guy when it comes to grammar and punctuation and stuff like that. So like capitalization and stuff like that. And then like just a little bit of have somebody proof it um, because like, you're, you know, if you're trying to get those big checks, you're going to be dealing with people who have like weird idi idiosyncrasies, like synchronous, like me, <laughs> and I'm going to like pick on stuff. So, I love it. so that's, that's kind of stuff like that. So, but, but man, that was, that was top notch. Thank it you. was super top notch. And by the way, Ankar, I, I know what you're talking about. We've dealt with investors and, and we put numbers and projections up on the screen and, they immediately start doing the calculations to see if the math adds up and they completely lose the thread of everything else because they get so wrapped up in that. Yep. But but um, I, I want to chip in my two cents worth. First of all, again, it, it was a terrific presentation, making it personal and telling that whole story arc and then slamming us with the end was, that guy was me. And when you land there for my money, and we're all, we're all going to make a donation after we're finished with the presentation, but for my money, really land on that one and, and say, I have done all of this through them and I want to give back and make sure that it continues. But the, the story is just fantastic. And um, I have no quibbles with any of that. But I want to I wanna go where Ankar was going a little bit and be the, the pitch practice guy, the presentation tune-ups guy. And remember our days in Toastmasters, I love right? It. I love it. You know, Toastmasters is still one of the great, it's pitch practice mm -hmm. for everybody. And and this is this is a part of it. So bringing Toastmasters into today, what I would like to see in your slides is you establish the imagine rhythm at the beginning and give it to us big mm -hmm. and start with that. But then what I would suggest is make the imagine a little bit smaller in each slide mm -hmm. now that you've established it and then hit us with a big giant headline or takeaway from each slide. What you've done by and large is put your script in the slides. I would rather see you uh, make that into a succinct takeaway from each mm. slide mm. and then take everything that you have in the slide put it in your script and go ahead and deliver it. I mean, the script, the narrative, it's wonderful. But the slides, I need to be able to get the takeaway like that and then be able to focus back on you and listen to the details of the narrative. Gotcha. I love yeah, it. Yeah, like less words on the slide and more like the, the, the symbolism. I mean, it could be like some words, but like the symbolism of it, right? What are you trying to convey? That's a, that's a really good... You know, it's a really good point, Steve. I love we that. call we call that bottom line up front or bluffing. Bluff, I want you to bluff. bluff. Yeah. Yep. Don't yeah. don't make me read it and guess what yeah. you want me to know. Yeah. Tell me what you want me to know, and then tell me again in your in your words. Also, I would have I was looking at the one of the slides, and it was Marche on Diamond or Marche on Randolph or something, and I, I thought it was March on Randolph, and <laughs> can. Could you get a graphic of the marquee of the restaurant so that we yep. understand better? Mm -hmm. um, I love and, it. And, and aside from those little quibbles, um, I think everybody's going to write a check. And hopefully when we broadcast this show at large, I want to see a big spike in donations the next week. Yeah. <laughs> it will so, be really appreciated. We're, we're shifting it. Uh, the organization right now. So the goal is to, especially with being virtual, we're able to reach more kids. But in that regard, we need to have more, you know, team members to do the work. So. Right, right. You have any of the product with you? You have any books or anything right it. there in the studio? Everything. Hold them up. Everything. See, now we get a look at the apron. So with the Chef Diamond and Friends, 
Magic Hat. This is my storybook that yeah. uh, teaches kids to believe in themselves. Here we have Chef Diamond's Pizza Party. So if you if you see that building behind is Midtown Bowl, are y'all familiar? Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is it's a great. I know the owner there; he's amazing. So I decided to put them on the cover. You know, I love that place. I so, love it. Yeah, I love it. So I have so I have so many. I have aprons. I have knives. If you like, I can go grab a box and show everything. Or uh, it's no, up to not today. Okay, because we're running out of time a little bit, but. Um, another thing about making a presentation, bring the props with you. Yeah. In fact, yeah. if you were at the convention, if you could hand a few out and let yeah. people pass them around a little bit. Um, I, like to, I like to tell presenters that they can break up the presentation a little bit with a demo, holding up the product so it really becomes real. It snares your attention back to it too, because if they if people are kind of starting to drift off, maybe they have other stuff they're thinking about. You hand them a prop, and they're like they're back in focus, laser, you know, razor focus. I love it. I love it. And and just to wrap this up a little bit, I remember back when I first met Diamond, his first book. Do you have a copy of the very first book that you did? Yep. Right here. I knew he. I knew he would. So. That how to become a successful young man. Right. Talk about that for one, one more second, and then we'll call it a day. So I can tell this. You want me to tell the story with you, Steve? Yes, sir. <laughs> so this is an amazing story. So um, literally, um, uh, coming from Chicago, I ended up in Atlanta throughout my journey. And one day, my brother, he comes to my house, and I'm working three jobs. I'm, you know, I'm stacking, and I'm you know, just building and building and building. He said, bro, how are you doing what you're doing? And I said, you know what? I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm telling him all I, I'm telling him all the answers. I have all the solutions to the questions that he's asking me. And it just hit me. I'm pretty sure there's another young man that would like to know or another young woman who would like to know uh, the same things. So I said, I'm going to write a book. And over the course of a couple of years, um, just just crafting the book. Now, mind you, I was working two to three jobs around the clock. So I'm writing in the middle of the night. <laughs> And my, my girlfriend at the time, she, go to bed, go to bed. And I'm like, there's something inside of me. I got to get out. So I ended up uh, writing the book. And it was a little thin. It was like probably half the size. Um, so I had gave all the copies to friends, friends of mine, one of them, which is Steve. And I said, Steve, read this. Check this out and let me know your thoughts. So he came back with some great feedback. He said, the book is good. The book is really good, but it needs more of you. Um, and in that in that return, you know, I ended up writing stories in the back of each chapter that will correlate with what I'm talking about in the chapter to encourage the kids in that area of their lives. So it, and then the, the cover has changed, you know, put some put a young man on the cover with the books next to them and, you know, put the video games in the garbage can <laughs> on the back each of them to take over the world. <laughs> so this is. Absolutely great stuff. You have you have Amazon, reached Amazon the moon. Like that. I can buy this. Can buy yep. this book? Yeah. Yes, indeed. It's a book. It's a workbook uh, for young men, and then I have one for young uh, women as well to empower them to. I got I got one of each. I'll buy one of one of each and give it to my kids. Awesome, awesome. That's, uh, <laughs> All right. Can I can I, can I just say that yeah. Diamond that I am really I am very happy to have been introduced to you. I mean, this is. I just, you know, uh, honestly, I don't, I don't hear stories like this enough. Like people, you know, pitch me on software as a service and platform as a service and like, you know, tech stuff and, you know, the new things, Bitcoin. And, you know, I, this is what I hear on a daily basis. I don't hear mm -hmm. stuff that makes my heart full. Right. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I'm, I am coming, you know, I consider this, you know, you know, since I told you I like to get started at like 10 o'clock. So like, this is like, I'm starting my day with a full heart. Wow. So, I mean, I want you to know that, that you're, you, you've set the tone for my day and I'm really, really thankful. Great. Thank you, Ankur. Any last thoughts from you, Christy? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely concur with Ankur. Like it's, it's just, it's nice to see your hustle muscle and all that you're doing in all different streams, all collaboratively, you know, with, with a kind of a centrifugal focus. 
And it's, it's so impressive. Your accolades. I mean, I would, I would love to come cook with you eventually when we're out of COVID. (laughs) (laughs) You should check on those Facebook feed, by the way, for the recipes and such. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I too am, you know, walking away smiling, thinking what a great consumer, you know, kind of approach, but also it's just doing so much on the back end to create, create this incredible resource of education and faculty for kids that, you know, can grow, but also just all that you've done with your books and the way that you're telling your stories. And it's, it's just magnificent. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that's a great place to leave it. It's a great start to everybody's day. It's a great start to virtual pitch practice. And I want to thank Ankur and Christy for uh, working with me on this first show. I want to thank uh, all my friends and the support group and colleagues who were watching this. And of course, I especially want to thank Diamond McNulty, Chef Diamond, and wish you all the best luck. Thank you. And that'll do it for today's program. We will have another program next week, 11 o'clock, same time, same station. And I look forward to seeing everybody then.